around the world. Millions. Everyone is talking about making a murderer and the trials of Stephen Avery. It's not over. Over the years, we have seen several interesting Netflix documentaries come and go. One such documentary is the American true crime documentary series, Making a Murderer, which was written and directed by Laura Ricciardi and Myra Demos. The two-season documentary followed the case of Stephen Avery, the alleged murderer of Teresa Halbach. After serving 18 years in prison for a crime he may not have committed, Avery was exonerated in 2003, only to be convicted again in 2007, alongside his nephew, Brendan Dacey. With Avery still in prison and the second season of the documentary series ending in 2018, fans have yearned for updates about the cast of the series. That's why in today's video, we will be taking a look at the Making a Murderer cast then and now. But before we go into the video, quickly hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified anytime we drop a new video. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Dean Strand and Jerry Boutin. For those of you who remember the series well, to some of the evidence that's lacking that you would expect to find if Mr. Avery was really guilty. Dean Strand and Jerry Boutin were the beloved lawyer duo who represented Stephen Avery during the Making a Murderer documentary. Since the documentary series ended in 2018, the two lawyers have attracted a lot of media attention and have since been on a tour around the U.S. with their A Conversation on Justice Q&A sessions. In an interview with The Daily Beast, Dean Strand said, Jerry and I both have always been in touch with Stephen on and off. And as to his real thoughts about the case, Dean continued saying, could he be guilty? Sure, he could. Do I think he was proven guilty? No. Do I think there's a real strong chance he could be innocent? Yes, but that's just me. I wasn't asked to decide. Ken Kratz. During the Avery case, Ken Kratz was the Calumet County District Attorney and a special prosecutor. That on Halloween of 2005, that all ended. That ended in the hands. Ken was deemed a liar after several scenes in the documentary revealed how he manipulated facts to suit his case. This quickly turned him into the villain in the eyes of millions of viewers. Even after the show, negative publicity followed Ken as news of his involvement in the 2009 sexting scandal surfaced online. Kratz did not cooperate with producers or interviewers in the series. He later criticized them, saying they had left out key pieces of evidence. After the release of the series, his Yelp page was inundated with so many negative comments criticizing his tactics during the case. Ken was found to have breached the client-lawyer relationship by sending graphic sexual messages to a female client. After the case, Ken was forced to stop practicing. He even admitted to having been addicted to prescription drugs and feeling suicidal. Jody Stokowski Before he was arrested for Hobak's murder, Avery and Stokowski were in a two-year relationship that saw them get engaged to each other. During the time of Avery's arrest, Stokowski was in jail and not long after, the two lovebirds split up. After going their separate ways, Stokowski has come out to reveal that she believes Avery is guilty of killing Halbach, stating further that her ex was abusive when they were together. As of today, multiple reports show that Stokowski now lives in Appleton, Wisconsin, even though she continues to wallow in her life of crime. Kathleen Zellner. During the second season of Making a Murderer, Kathleen Zellner was the one person we could not but give respect to. Kathleen is seen as the only person who can prove Avery's innocence. After season two ended, she continued to play an integral part in the case by bringing forward new evidence and arguing for a client's rights. Since Avery is not Kathleen's only client, the attorney also has to attend to other cases. She has continued to handle other cases similar to that of Avery's, like the case of Kevin Fox, and Mario Casicario, both of whom were falsely accused of murder. Zellner has argued that Avery should be allowed to present new evidence, she says, shows inconsistency in the state's theory of the case, specifically that Halbach was shot in the head on Avery's garage floor. She also claims a forensic fire expert was able to determine that no body was ever burned in Avery's burn pit. Kathleen is active on Twitter and in December 2020 stated the following in her latest tweet. Talk to Stephen Avery today. He sounds strong, positive, and is optimistic about the appellate court. We will never stop fighting to free him. We sent him the hundreds of supportive messages. Laura Ricciardi and Myra Demos. According to the Daily Beast, Laura Ricciardi and Myra Demos are not just the writer and the director of the documentary series, but they are also real life partners. Both women discovered Avery's case by reading his story in the New York Times. This led them to dedicating 10 years of their lives to working on the film. 
Thankfully for Laura and Myra, they didn't have to wait another 10 years before they were able to make the second season. Since the second season of the documentary ended, the two women have spent less time off the screen and more time on social media, promoting and defending their series. Brendan Dassey Earlier in the video, I made mention of Brendan Dassey, Avery's cousin, who was arrested with him when he was convicted in 2007. Brendan was arrested after he confessed to helping Avery rape and murder Halbach. Although many believe any claim that suggested Brendan was involved in the murder was false. He remains in prison at the Oshkosh Correctional Institution 2048 when he will be eligible for parole. It should also be noted that in 2018, Brendan's legal team tried to get a judicial review of the lower court's decision about the case. This attempt could have helped Brendan regain his freedom, but it was later denied. Dassey is now 31 years old. His only chance at parole is currently set for the year 2048. Stephen Avery. Just like his cousin, Stephen Avery is yet to regain his freedom and he sits quietly at the Wappen Correctional Institution, waiting for the next big decision that will affect his life. As earlier mentioned, Avery is serving his second time in prison for a crime that he may not have committed. But with the system stacked against him, Avery continues to hope that one day he will walk free again. At the 19, he almost got his wish after he received news of him winning the right to appeal his case on the basis that potential new evidence was discovered. Unfortunately for Avery, his appeal for a new trial was rejected. Now 58, the future is certainly unknown for Avery. The Court of Appeals website lists the Avery case as a waiting assignment. On that note, we draw the curtain on today's video about the cast of Making a Murderer and where they are today. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you think Avery is guilty or innocent? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. One thing that holds true is the amount of support across the world for both Brendan and Avery. Also, don't forget to like the video and share the video with your friends and family. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.